What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. Today I wanted to show you my compact player made missile. This is a guided missile so it uses an antenna and a remote control and in the front you have a camera here and I'll show you how to build it and I'll show you what it can do. Okay so a little bit of an overview on how this missile works. So you have an H2 generator, there's no tank on it and the generator, as long as it has enough ice, is able to power these two thrusters. You only need thrust in one direction. And you can place ice in it and you can configure the missile from here. You can access everything. And then you have your antenna and you have the remote control. And two small batteries are enough to power it. And you have a gyroscope set to 50% power. And then you have a couple light armor blocks and then the merge block to connect it to whatever ship you have. And then you have the rotor, which is how you go from the large grid to the small grid, and it's locked in place. And then you have three blast doors in a single line. I personally found that one block wide, or two blocks wide at the most, is best for heavy penetration. Um, blast doors at full speed are very, very nasty against any kind of grid. And if you make it wider, like three or four blocks wide, or if you have like a cross shape, it's gonna do a lot of area damage but it's not gonna penetrate very far and I'll demonstrate that when we actually test um, but this is what I found to be the best bang for your buck as far as being a tiny missile I will say that if you're attacking a ship that has a lot of turrets and defenses and whatnot or if it's actively moving it will greatly reduce the effectiveness of this missile this missile is best suited for causing carnage on something that's already been disabled and immobilized or just somebody who's not really prepared or expecting to get hit or even just a station or a base these are absolutely devastating missiles against stationary targets that do not have active turrets so let's get into building it okay so to produce this missile the first thing you're going to want to do is get your blast armor it's just standard blast doors and for the sake of visibility I'm gonna be making an orange missile so or keep in mind that the blast doors are directional so you can place it one way but not necessarily the other so you're gonna want three in a line like so and then you're gonna to wanna to slap a camera on the front here and the orientation of your camera is pretty important because that's gonna be how you drive it so if you're very new as you can see from this line here that's how you know that that's the top of the camera. Um, in small grid, just to demonstrate for newbies here, it will actually say camera. So when the words are up, that means that that's the correct orientation. So, okay, we have the payload of our missile complete. And now coming to the back, this is where it gets interesting. So, okay, we have a rotor, a large grid rotor. And it's going to create a large head. So what you want to do is grind that down or delete it. And what you need to do is put a small head on it. So the way that we're going to do that, since you have no way to access this from the outside, is just slap a control panel on it real quick. And then from here you can access the rotor. And we're going to add a small head and we're going to lock the rotor. So there's our small head. It's been locked. We no longer need the control panel. So go ahead and get rid of that. And then now we have the H2 generator, which looks like so. And we want it oriented like so, centered on the small head. Go ahead and click that. And remember, it's important to be able to access this door so that you can add ice, because it won't go anywhere without ice. And see, so now we have our generator. Let's go ahead and slap some hydrogen thrusters on that bad boy orient them correctly and throw them up there and then in the middle of those we have our antenna place it like so and then we have our remote control the orientation of the remote control is very important as well as you can see this is how it should be oriented you have your light in the middle and then this going up so if we have that facing forward like so 
then that will ensure that the missile is moving like I am. So when you point left, it'll go left. When you point right, it'll go right. And it's lined up with the camera here. It's very, very important. And then now we have our batteries and our gyroscope. So I have two small batteries here. We'll slap these up here. And the gyroscope. which we will connect via the antenna. Alright, and then the last thing to do is get our merge block. The problem with placing the merge block in line with everything else is that it'll get stuck up against the rotor and it doesn't have a lot of clearance. So by placing that extra layer it just makes sure that the missile will take off smoothly without any kind of issues. So the cheapest way I think to do that is just make a cross and then slap your merge block down. And it's very compact, it's very minimalist, it's very spartan, and it's very effective. So we'll go ahead and fill this with some ice. I think a happy amount to put in here is a thousand. It doesn't need a whole lot. So we have a thousand ice. Go ahead and slap this in here. And I'll go ahead and configure it while we're here. The antenna, I usually only put about 3,000 meters for range. You really don't need 5,000 meters. On servers and stuff, the average sync distance is 3,000 meters, maybe a little more. So if you can't see your target, you can't hit your target necessarily unless it's a station. So I just go ahead and turn that down. And then with the gyroscope, we'll go ahead and control click the slider and make it... 0.5 for 50 percent and then we've already locked our rotor and everything should be good I'm gonna go ahead and group the thrusters together I'm gonna make a group for it and I'll tell you why that's important later and everything else should be good I'll make this the main remote control and that's about it so from there you want to configure the what I consider the software of the missile. You're going to want to press K to bring up your menu, go to remote access, and then go ahead and access the missile control and from here you should be able to move it around. And what we want to do is we want to set it up, press G, and you want to map your camera to view and under groups you want to map your missile thrusters and what I like to do, I like to have one for toggle on and off. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and shut the thrusters off. And then I'm going to access it again. And I'm going to set the missile thrusters to increase thrust override. And I'm going to go ahead and crank that all the way up. And what that's going to do is, as soon as I turn on these thrusters, this missile is just going to take off. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the dampeners, too. And that is pretty much it. Um, I have a little cosmetic flare on mine. I have this little meme at the top of it. And the way that you would replicate that, if you so choose, is start with an LCD panel and place it like so. And I use something called Whiplash's Image Converter, which I'll put in the description of the video. And you want to hit K on this LCD panel. And in the instructions for the Image Converter, it tells you Monospace Font, which is at the bottom, and 0.1 font size. And then you paste what it gives you in Edit Text. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to hit Control A to copy all. I mean to uh, select all. Control C for copy and hit OK. And now it's in my clipboard. And I'll go ahead and paste that in here. I'll set text and images and monospace, point one font, edit text, paste, control V, and hit OK. And there we are. So that is the compact missile. So let's check its performance next. All right, guys, so this will be the ship that we'll be performing the missile test on. It is a ship that my friend made. I would consider it a cruiser, even though it's light armor. It has two nacelles, a bunch of turrets on the top. I guess it's more of a gunboat, really. And I'll give you a quick interior tour. 
just for the sake of being familiar with the ship we're about to blow up. So you have your bridge here, there's no gravity on at the moment. You have the bridge here and then you come down and this is basically what it looks like inside. It's nice and open, a lot of dense area in the back, batteries, reactors and whatnot, production back here. So the first area that I'll be testing is hitting it through the engine nacelles. We have large hydrogen thrusters, hydrogen tanks in the middle. Actually, no, never mind. I'm not sure where the hydrogen tanks are, but I guess this had, this had some modded parts. But anyway, this will serve as a test bed for the missile. So I'm going to go ahead and teleport to my small grid craft which is dedicated built to carry these missiles and let's go ahead and fire the missile that we built control there we go I'm gonna orient it correctly alright dampeners are off the thrust override is all the way up let's go ahead and engage this press the number three as you can see it accelerates very quickly it's not very heavy and we're just going to slam right into the middle of this thing. Boom. So as you can see, that was a pretty nasty hit. So let's see how we did. It is drifting, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And teleport here. Alright, so how did we do? I think that speaks for itself here. So the ship has been completely sheared in half and this nacelle from what I can see is completely gone and it's just been completely sheared open there were jump drives in here now there are not that's what's left of this nacelle and here's the front half of the ship so absolutely devastating I'll show a few more tests but I mean if you're hitting something made out of light armor you can kiss it goodbye that's all I can say so let's do a test on some heavy armor stuff Okay guys, so this is a very similar ship. It's basically a heavy armor version of the previous ship. And I just wanted to use something very similar so that we can get an idea of the difference between light and heavy armor when it comes to this missile. So let's go ahead and take a tour of this one. Again, we have production in the back, and then batteries, gyroscopes. And then we have an auxiliary bridge down here. The wheels are for attempting to prevent a kinetic attack like this. Um, objects tend to bounce off of wheels, so it actually is a pretty decent defense against stuff like this. However, they get torn apart pretty easily by the Gatling guns and the uh, missile turrets. We have our jump drive here, a bridge, and then we have a light second floor here. So this is what we'll be hitting. And then if I come out here, can see we have the nacelles and these actually do have hydrogen tanks on board so let's see what we do to this thing it's all heavy armor so I'll teleport back to my little space bomber here and it has the exact same missiles ready to go so the way that I would fire this from here is I'm going to turn off a merge block turn on my thrusters distance myself just a little bit and now I'm going to go into remote access, and now I have my missile, I have it on, and I have kind of a funky angle, but let's go for it. Disengage dampeners, and let's go. As you can see, it accelerates very quickly, and I'm just going to slam right into the middle of that. How do we do? Well, it looks bad from here. Let's find out. This one is drifting much less, but it is moving nonetheless. Alright, let's see what we did. Drop in the top here. And keep in mind, this is heavy armor, so it entered here. And it missed the jump drive, but it appears to have tumbled and gone forward. And it sent chunks out this way, that way, and that way. And out the front. I did not expect that. So, absolutely devastating effect on the ship. 
I do believe that the wheels actually had something to do with this area being saved. So just keep that in mind. Um, I will go ahead and hit this with a second shot in the back just because there's so much intact here. So I'm going to go ahead and reposition this. You can actually see the missile has continued on that direction. Alright, let's hit this thing right up the butt. Like so. And that's what's left of the missile. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. All right, boom, disconnect the missile, scoot, and remote access, there it is, and engage, turn off dampeners, and keep in mind this is going to hit all that production, all those batteries, this should be nasty. Ooh, it hit that connector first. Doesn't look too bad from here. Let's find out what we did. Okay, so... By hitting that connector, it took out all of these conveyors here. And then it went in here, took out the refinery, blew out something down here, and it went all the way up to here. So because it was dense, the penetration wasn't the best, however, it did wipe out quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, okay, so it went in this far and then went out this direction. But that's still a pretty nasty blow. I mean, you're talking about something that's 12,000 kilograms and, I mean, how expensive is it really to make? You have some steel plates and some construction components and motors, basic stuff, just basic stuff. Nothing particularly advanced, nothing expensive, no rare resources, nothing like that. Just a missile. So it's the best bang for your buck, in my opinion, for something small against, like I said, an already immobilized target. These missiles do get chewed up and knocked off course pretty easily by missile turrets, so just be aware of that if that's something you want to do. And then I'll get into missile design in another video with the cross design. Like I said, this is primarily meant as a penetrator, as you can see here. In fact, you know what? As a bonus, let's do one more test. I'll do one more test for you guys. Okay, guys, anybody who does PvE very much should recognize this ship. This is the mine laying ship, as you can see. Let's go ahead and hit this, since it's something that everybody's familiar with pretty much. It's definitely an applicable test. So I'll go back to my space bomber that has conveniently one more missile. Go ahead and turn off that last merge block. Scoot out the way a little bit. And let's go ahead and fire it. Looking right down the mouth of that thing. And something I noticed, it only takes about 200 meters to fully accelerate this missile, so you can use it at close range. My gyroscopes are super effective now that I'm not carrying anything. Well, it looks nasty. Let's go take a look. It's drifting, so I'll stop it. Alright, how'd we do? This thing looks gutted. Absolutely gutted. All the way through, down here, all the way out. If you wanted to absolutely ruin somebody's day if their ship was parked, this would be the way to do it. So I highly recommend this missile. I'll go ahead and include the blueprint with the upload. So enjoy you guys and take care. See you next time.